Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Hey, give me some peanuts and Cracker Jacks because we're going to be flying over the baseball park today, checking out the green monster. Yeah, it's actually in this game. We're going to be drafting our baseball players in a fantasy league, but they're fantasy characters. So we have Fantasy Fantasy Baseball. This is for one to five players. It's from CSE Games. Now this is going to be a rule school. So what I'm going to do, first I'm going to give you a one minute quick overview of how the game works. Then I'm going to teach you how to set up the game and then how to play it rule for so you don't even have to read the rule book. So without further ado, let's get started. In Fantasy Fantasy Baseball, you're trying to win different games throughout the weeks and over different months to get to the World Series. Each week, you're trying to win the amount of wins on this card by having the most of something, like RBIs and stolen bases. And you'll do this by secretly programming all four characters for that week. Will you try to win the week to get the wins? Or will you try to just go up the stat track by the different colors? Which will give you points at the end of the game, depending on which place you are in each of the stat tracks. And which two players will you hold back in your hand to be able to activate their special magic ability while resolving cards? You'll also be drafting cards and swapping out cards from the free agent pools between the months. Hopefully having you win enough games to get into the World Series where you do a final 4 out of 7 for the game win. Each player will get to take the wizard of the color of their choice. You'll also take the tile with the fantasy fantasy baseball of your color. You'll also take 5 of these stat tracker markers and the baseball of your color. You'll then put the stat track board where everyone can reach and see it. If you like, you can use these green stands to stand this upright for a three-dimensional board. That's optional. You'll also place the infield board where everyone can see and reach, and you'll randomly place one of the manager's baseballs on the far right, and you'll then go clockwise order, placing all of the rest of the ones that are in play. In this case, we're playing a four-player game. You'll then shuffle the infield cards like this, and you'll just place them right there on the mound. You'll then take all the character cards, and you're going to separate them out into five different piles. On the top right of the cards, you'll see rookies, all-stars, specialists, pros, and hall of fame. They all have different colored stripes at the top as well, and you'll just put them in different piles to keep them separate. Place the rest of the cards that were not passed out to draft in a pile face down near the stat track board. This is known as the character deck. Once those piles are separated, you'll turn them over, shuffle them, and deal out cards to each player. Each player is going to get one Hall of Famer, one Pro, one Specialist, one All-Star, and three Rookies. That's a total of seven cards. They will keep these cards secret. They will be looking at them because we're about to start a draft. Each player is going to look at the seven cards given to them. They're going to place one face down. They are then going to take the six remaining cards. They will pass them to the player to the left. This will continue until everybody has seven cards face down. Now, once everybody has seven cards, they're going to look at all seven cards and they're going to decide on their own which one of these cards to discard out. So they'll have six cards to start the game. Everyone will discard that card into a discard pile. Do not confuse it with the character deck. The game is played over three rounds, known as three months, then a World Series. During these three normal rounds, we're going to go through four different phases. The first is prepare. So what we'll do is we'll take the top cards off of the mound and we will place them face up at each of the four bases. So now you see we have the four cards that are going to be the four weeks in this round. Each card will tell us how many wins this card is worth. Wins are essentially points in this game. In this one, home runs plus RBIs, whoever has the most of those is going to win this card. Now, home runs is this symbol, and RBIs is this symbol. Now, when you have your character cards, there's two types of character cards. One of them are hitters. The hitters have icons that are blackened, which means that this is an offensive hitting player. Now, if I look at these icons here, this here is this, and this is this. So in this case, I would add up both of these, and this would be 18. I have an 18 value to try to win this card. Now, conversely, this player here appears to possibly have these two colors, but don't get these confused. This player is a pitcher, and you can tell that because these are white symbols, not black symbols. So these will not be worth anything because this is a hitter's uh, game, and this is a pitcher. 
And going back to another smaller hitter, this player only has one of the needed icons, so this player is worth three. And so you're trying to get the most to be able to win this. Normally after the board's been prepared for the round, we would go through free agency, but it doesn't happen in the first round, so we'll skip it now, we'll come back to this later. Once those four win cards have been placed face up, all the other players are going to select which four of the six cards they're going to play that round. And as you can see, it looks like a diamond. In the middle is the tile, and we have first, second, third, and home. Put face down, and then you put your wizard on top when you're done selecting. Once everyone's selected their roster, we will go through each of the four games for this month in that consecutive fashion. When we get to first, everyone will flip over their card on the first base of their diamond, and then we would resolve it. So each player would flip over that card, tally up the home runs and RBIs, making sure it's offensive, the black icons in this case, and they would tally it up and say what the number is. And at this point, we would go in turn order to see if anybody wants to use magic. The brown player would get to go first, then black, then blue, and then purple. Well, what is this magic that you could possibly use? Now, if you remember, you played four cards around your diamond. Two of them are still in your hand that you did not select. Those are considered on your bench, and those are the ones you can possibly use magic for. So let's say these were the two. They'd be in my hand, and when it became my turn to possibly use magic, I could flip them face up on the table and use their magic ability. For example, summon. I could add this orc stats to this week's game. And this is very advantageous because this week we are looking for that. So I could add that to my character's uh, stats for the week. Or maybe I could swap uh, a character with another one of my characters. Maybe, uh, you know, I could swap any of the ones on the base. Maybe even already has been resolved with another one. So these do all sorts of different abilities. If you do use this, you place it face uh, up just like this on the table. And you cannot use it again for the rest of this month, which essentially of these first four weeks that have been dealt. Now, all the magic abilities on the players are somewhat self-explanatory, but if you have any further questions, you can look at page 11 in the rulebook, which goes over all of the magic abilities in more detail. Now, once everyone has had the ability to possibly play magic in this turn order once, then this will finally resolve, and then at that point, whoever has the highest, in this case, of these two, would collect this card for the two wins. If there's ever a tie during the normal rounds, basically, good players will always beat evil players. If it's still tied, nobody will win it this round, which would make everybody available for the stat track. Now, anybody that did not win this gets to go up the stat track. On every card, you'll see a different amount of colors here. This is stat track. Anybody that has played a yellow or an orange this turn can go up on the stat track. Now, if this was the player that won, even though this player has an orange and a yellow, they wouldn't go because they were actually the one to collect this card. But anybody else that had it would be able to go. Like, let's say this player had played and they did not win, but they have orange. They could go up the orange stat track once. If they had orange and yellow, they'd be able to go up both of those tracks once. So let's say the blue player played this in the first week. They have a yellow, they have an orange. Note that even this yellow and orange was a pitcher. It wasn't even able to possibly win, but it does not matter because here you're just looking for colors. So we have yellow and orange. This blue player would go up once on the yellow and once on the orange. So if it's the first one, they would place it in the yellow and in the orange. If they were already here, they would move it up one more in the stat track, and this is keeping track of how high you are in each of the stats. Every player that did not win this card this round gets to go up in the stat tracks once for each of the colors that were on the player that they played that week. Now since we finished first, then we would go to second and we would do the same thing. Everyone would flip it over and we'd resolve. So in this case, it's stolen bases or saves. So this could be an offensive player or a pitcher that could win this one. It's this or that. And then the stat track in this case is all the different colors. And once we've resolved all four, this month's games are over. Then we'll do some cleanup. First of all, whoever has the least amount of wins will be first in waiver order. Notice, waiver order's arrow goes left. So from here to here is first. So let's say blue had the least amount of wins. They'd go first. Then let's say it was black. Now let's say that it was purple and then it was brown. This is the waiver order that we're going to go over just a moment on how you waiver, but it's opposite for the turn order of where and when you play magic. Each player will then take the four characters that they've played that round and the two that were in their bench, regardless if they played magic with them or not, they'd place them all back in their hands, all six of them. You then prepare another round by flipping face up the four different win cards for this month. 
And now that we're done with the first round, we're actually in the second round, we would then go to free agency. Now what we would do is take the character deck and deal out the amount of players plus two. So in here we have four players. So there's a total of six cards that are face up. This is the free agency pool. Now starting in this waiver order, going to the left, so blue will have the first chance to gather a waiver. And how they do this is they select a card that they want, they put it in their hand, and they replace it with one of the cards that's already in their hand, which means they still have six cards in their hand. Each player would have an opportunity in this order to be able to do that. Once everyone has had a chance to gather a player through waivers, all these cards would be shuffled back into the character deck. After all three rounds have been played, meaning you've played the first, second, third, and home of three rounds in a row, the regular season's over. We'll then look at the stat track board. And here we'll look at who's in first, second, third, and all these different places. In this case, we're playing with four players. In this case, brown is the best in this one, then black, then blue. In this case, it's black and then blue and brown are tied for second place, and so on and so forth. You would go through each one of these stat tracks one at a time, and you'd give a certain amount of wins out depending on who is in what place. When you give out wins right now, they'll just grab the top of the win cards like the mound and give them just like this. You do not use the win total here. This is just considered one win. And the amount of wins you get depends on this table that you can refer to by pausing this video. In this case, as you see in a four player game, first place will get three, second place gets two, third place gets one. If people are tied for a certain position, uh, the tied people there all get it. So if there were two people tied for first, they'd both get three, but no one would get second place and whoever was next would get third place. So friendly ties here. Then each player would total their wins by the values of the cards they won, and the single card they just got from the stat track board. In this case, this player has 12 wins. After everyone said how many wins they have, the top two teams will go to a final game seven of the World Series. If there's a tie, there'll be one wild card round between the tied teams. The wild card is very quick and easy. You will just flip over the top win card. Then both teams that are in the wild card will select their one single card. They will then flip it over and whoever wins this, it gets into the World Series and the other one is eliminated. So if both players played this, this player over here would be the one that won because they have six. If it was a tie for some reason, you would just flip over a new win card and see which one of the two players already played is the winner. Also, there's no magic being used in the wild card. And also the player who won, which would be this one, has to leave this card face up in front of them. This card cannot be used for the beginning of the World Series. More on that, so let's move to the World Series. The World Series is played a little differently. All you need to do is be the first one to win any four win cards, regardless of the amount of wins on that card. So each win card you win is worth one of them, first to four wins. Now the team that had the most wins at the end of the regular season is the home team. The one who didn't, or was in second place, or the one that just won wild card will be the visitor team. Regardless, both players will now program all four bases for the World Series. However, the visitor must flip their card first so that the home player gets to see it. This is only done in the first card of the World Series. It's the home field advantage. The home player now can look at this card. They can look at the cards that they've programmed, and then they can decide if they want to rearrange any or all of the cards that they've already programmed. Again, this is only for the first card of the World Series. Then it's resolved as normal. The winner would take this card and just flip it up because it's considered as one win. If it's a tie, good beats evil like normal. If it's still a tie in the World Series, a new card would just get flipped up, and with the cards that are already played there, whoever wins wins. Keep doing that until someone has won that round. You would continue doing this until the end of the fourth game. If the same player had won all four, they win the World Series. If not, we're going to continue the World Series. So let's say here, four cards have been played for the World Series, and let's say it's not over yet. We're going to go to a fifth game. What happens is each player takes the card that they played for the first game back into their hand, but the rest stay out because this is game five. Now what happens in game five is a new win card will come out just like normal on the board and they would try to win it. But remember, since they have three cards here, they're going to have less cards in their hand to choose from to try to program here. Now, magic can be played in the World Series. For example, if in game one, this player played this card and this player played magic, they would put it next to this. 
So therefore, when they come back down to the fifth game, if there is one, they would get both of these cards back on their hand. That way, if they've used both Magic through the first four games of the World Series, they're not going to have a lot of choices when they get back. Also, when there is a wild card game, the player who won that game, once you get to game five, can get that player back into their hand to begin game five. If you'd like a faster World Series, you can play it with no Magic in the World Series as well. And whoever wins four games first is the winner, therefore the most games you can play is seven. Now there's some different variant rules you can play with. This baseball here doesn't do anything but it's for fun. You can put it on the no crying side if someone's complaining and give it to them, or you can flip it over if someone's taking a long time to think for the rain delay. You can decide to play with event cards. These get added to the game, and as you prepare each round, you flip an event card over and it will affect that round. So here it says, Rally Cap Torture Device. Evil characters can only move up on the stat track once this month. Now, if you have any questions on the details of some of these rules, go to the link in the description of this video. It will bring you to the publisher's website where all of these are clarified. If you're playing with four or five players, you might want to play with more wins. Each spot on the board now gets two cards, one face up and one turned the other way. That way, when you play your card for that round, when you flip it, it could either be facing this way, meaning you're trying to win this card, or this way, meaning you're trying to win that card. That way, more people can get more wins when there's more players. Keeping in mind, it can affect how strong the stat track is for that game. Also, if you like, you can always play with a wild card game, meaning whoever's in second and third place at the end of the three rounds will always do a one game wild card to get in. Normally, it's just if you're tied, but you can play it where there's always a wild card. This would give an even more advantage to the player that came in first place because whoever wins the wild card doesn't get that card back till game five of the World Series. You can play a solo game. To do this, you'll play against two other managers, so it's a three team game. First of all, you'll deal out a team to a robot manager. This manager will get three of each type, Hall of Fames, All-Stars, Rookies, Specialists, and Pros. Then you'd set up the game just like it was for three players, and for each of the weeks, you would assign that robot player. You'd look at the cards, and you'd assign one player in each of the spots. And each of these cards has to have at least one stat in common with the win card for that game. If there is no such thing, you randomly place a card there. Then for the second other manager that's not you, you would take three cards off the top of the character deck and put them in each of the four slots. And then when it comes time to reveal, you will select which of the three has the highest combined stats for that week. Now each of these other managers, the robots and the, de the character decks, can win. So if they win, they get the win cards and they move up stat tracks just like normal. Now the robot deck, once these are done, these will all go away and they cannot use these again in the regular season. So that way by the time they're done with the three seasons, they will have used all their cards, which if they made it to the World Series, they'd be able to get all nine of those cards back. And the World Series is played by the two winning teams, just like normal, and the World Series is played as normal. Well, I hope you enjoyed this overview and that it allowed you to dive into the game without having to learn the rule book and get to the fun of the game quicker. Now, if you have any additional questions to the rules, go ahead and leave them as comments and myself and CSC Games will do the best to answer them.